What's up, folks? You're listening to Real Laughs. My name is Mike Merlihy. It is Thursday, September 24th, and I am joined in studio with my co-host. As always, Mr. James John is here. Miguel Colon Jr. is in studio. Uh, I'm filling in tonight for Mr. Ken Miller, who unfortunately is dealing with some uh, family stuff. And uh, if you're listening, Ken, we just want to say we're all with you. We love you, and uh, we're here for you when you're ready, buddy. So, James, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm actually feeling pretty damn good, man. I got no complaints, man. Feeling yeah. good. Made the wife a lovely dinner today. Uh, I made her a, a mushroom and crab risotto. Uh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. You bougie. <laughs> <laughs> what does risotto mean? <laughs> Wet, Wet rice. rice. <laughs> yeah, no! Yo, get out of here. Same time. That's exactly what it is. That? Yes, it's yes man. Rice. I mean, it's delicious. Wet rice. It's delicious. Uh-huh. It's delicious. It is basically whatever you flavor it with, sort of. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, yes, yeah. It's like it's a tofu. Food. It takes on the properties of whatever you mix with it. Yeah. Oh man. wow. Yeah. Well, that's my new favorite insult for Latinos. I'm just gonna be <laughs> like, "What's up, risotto?" Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you'll probably be like 50-50 right on their name, so they'll be like, "Oh, what's yeah. up, man? How you doing?" Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's it used to be risotto. Now it's Guterres, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Speaking of Latinos, one of my favorites, Miguel Colon Jr. in studio. Miguel, how you doing, man? Good, man. Real good. You know, I was watching a video. We got a good buddy, Kermit Gonzalez. Uh, yeah. You know, we talk about him on the show. If you guys don't know him, he's a martial arts instructor, comedian, and DJ. All around good, grumpy guy. Who's yeah. Like, but I wa- I sent him a video that I saw, which was great. It was this little girl uh, practicing karate with like her sensei, and her sensei's holding a pad. And on the, the bottom of it, it just says, it doesn't matter the size of your opponent, go all out. And then the sensei kicks her and knocks her down across the <laughs> Oh my and God! I, <laughs> and I thought to myself, I was like, you know, because Kermit teaches a lot of children too. I don't think he, he holds back when he teaches them either. Like, I don't think I, so. I, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think he. Te- I think he's the kind of instructor you see. He's like Cobra Kai, but uh, he's there to just beat little kids up to feel good about himself. <laughs> Pretty much. I, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, it's like my sensei used to say. He's like, we don't take it easy on you in here because they're not going to take it easy on you out there. You yeah, know. That's right. You gotta sweep go the leg, leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> That's part of karate kid. I've said it before. You have to accept the fact that California had a bare knuckle sanctioned youth mixed martial arts competition. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would if that still existed. Imagine going to see a bunch of ten year olds to fifteen year olds bare knuckled fighting each other in mixed martial arts. I'd be there every weekend. It'd be like I like it. Yeah, I like it like, a lot. Yeah, well, it, that, it, it, it'd be like that's the, been the, the kumite. That's yeah. been the big debate for years. It's like, how how did it take us so long to realize that sweeping the leg was a illegal move, you know, and that was a yeah. penalty. But then, uh, yeah, he finished off with a face uh, a kick crank to the head, to the which yeah. was which is also illegal. illegal. But everybody's yeah. like, yeah, he wins. Like, no, no, never, he, no. You know, he craved it. He gave more. There was more pageantry to his. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's exactly right. I like the, the judges. The judges like. Yeah. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I like, that was I like beautiful. the second karate kid because I just love the idea that now Daniel goes to Okinawa and his, you know, 45 minute a day lessons with Mr. Miyagi put him on par to fight with these Okinawan kids that are fighting their family style of martial arts. Yes, and their, their entire lives. Their family, their entire yeah. lives. And <laughs> yes. remember, they also only fight kids who have learned martial arts from their families that have been yes. passed down. Yes. The, but you don't like, understand. Yeah. He learned karate in Encino, California. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it was Reseda, okay? Reseda, yeah. Reseda. I stand corrected and reaffirmed. Yeah. I love, I love in part two when uh, Mr. Miyagi's uh, old childhood friend breaks like a tree in half. Uh, or like a yeah. log in half. And Daniel sounds like, can you do that? And Mr. Miyagi's like, don't know. Never attacked by a tree. <laughs> tree. But, then, yeah. but then 20 minutes later, Miyagi's helping him win like a thousand dollars in an ice breaking bar championship. Yeah. I'm like, yes. Mr. Miyagi, the how move. many times have you been attacked by a hailstorm? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if you know this. It snows a lot over there. Yeah, he's like, there Miyagi, you go. That's a legal citizen, so he deal with the ice all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it is Thursday, September 24th. I want to give a special shout out. You know, a lot of times I see these celebrity birthdays.
birthdays. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know that guy or I really don't care about this guy. But I got to mm -hmm. tell you, I think I've watched every show this guy has been on. Mr. Robert Irvine turns 54 yes. years old. Robert yes. Irvine, one of my favorite shows. I, will, I get disappointed uh, because of the pandemic. They actually stopped filming live tapings of the show. So I kind of stopped watching. Right now, Restaurant Impossible is one yes. of my guilty pleasure binge watching shows and i think maybe it comes from you know we all have years in hospitality here and there's nothing that disturbs you more than seeing when he first walks into a restaurant that's asked for his help and we're not even professionals and we look around and we're like well there's your problem right there yeah, yeah. problem right yeah. there <laughs> you know and just I, go ahead i like him more than john tapper Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. like John Tapper, but so do I. I. Yeah, Tapper hits me up the like. Uh, I think, and I think they're all. I know they're all right about stuff because they're like you know they know how to make a restaurant super profitable. But we mm -hmm. come from the working end of it, and I right. like when they're like the most important thing, and I'm like, no, well, the most important thing is making sure that the expo is not high. Uh, that's, that's right. Or, or that's high right. Enough. He's either going to yeah. be high enough or not high. Yeah. There's a subtle level. You're right, Miguel. Yeah. They need to be at. You yeah. don't want them drunk. You want them a little yeah. buzz. You're buzzed, <laughs> yeah. though. You're telling me you came in dead sober? You're going to do that to Manny? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pretend right now I need some vodka for al vodka sauce. I need you to chug that. Yeah, it's you Friday you night. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Get you a bump or something. I'm not gonna leave you here, baby. I was working at Hard Rock Cafe Orlando, and we had this this expo guy. He he was the main expo. He worked six nights a week, and I I think his name was RJ. And I just remember RJ. We had they got paid like their minimum salary, but then we all as servers and bartenders tipped them out at the end of the night. You know, but Mike, Mike guy, quickly explain what Expo means to people who don't okay, know. Okay, Expo means expedite. So yes. when you're in the kitchen, you got the line. If you ever seen a movie, you see the line where all the cooks are putting up all the food and all the plates and everything else. The Expo is basically the middleman between the cooks and the servers. So what he does yes. is once that plate comes up on that window that keeps everything nice and hot. He goes ahead, puts the garnishes on, puts the sides, the ramekins, sets the orders together with the ticket to hand off to the food runner or the server to make sure everything's in place. He's mm -hmm. like the manager of what the server gets to deal with. The most and, important part of that night. Yeah, it, it's huge. If you got something running late, he's the one looking for it and finding it for you. So yeah. our expo was really good guy, RJ. But uh, he, he, never, he never reported his cash tips. So he would oh. just do that thing where he was getting paid like seven seventy five an hour from Hard Rock, and he would wouldn't report that. Well, then he decided he wanted to buy a house, and he was yeah. having problems getting finance for a house because he only made seven seventy five. So he had gone down to like HR and said, "Hey, we know I make more than seven seventy five. Can you just write me a note or something so that I can give it to them and say I make more than seven seventy five an hour?" And they're like, "No, you should have been claiming blah blah blah. That's on you." He's like, "All right." So it was like a Thursday night. At the end of the night, he went to the computer and put in his tips and put in like eighty five thousand dollars in one <laughs> night. He just put eighty five thousand dollars, so it would show up on his paycheck. Good That's lord, dollars. The bus boy's like, like, "When we get tipped out tonight." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, dude, I, I don't think that's how it's going to work for you, bro. No, and uh, he got his house, so I don't know what he did. But I can only imagine <laughs> payroll people going, we, we can't do this. We no. can't. <laughs> who, but, who came in and tipped you, Donald Trump? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Do you so, guys know, too, what the what favorite thing with the expo was when you had a good relationship with them? And mm. you might come up and you'd be like, okay, I just sent a check in. I should have sent this in like 20 minutes ago. Yep. I see everything up there I need. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're just yeah. nodding like, Expos will help you commit war crimes. They're like, okay. It's true. Mm -hmm. Take the chicken farm. Take the salt and buka. I'll figure mm -hmm. it out. Yes. Yep. So <laughs> now your table is set, but yeah. three other separate <laughs> tables are all waiting on one item. <laughs> yep. And then, and then and what the you end up doing, you know you end up doing, you find those people they don't know that you took all their stuff. Nope. The, the, the server, you're like, hey, bro, what can I do to help you out, Mike? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I yeah. know that you don't know. I just completely screwed you over. So yeah. I'm going to drop now. Now I'm cool. How can mm -hmm. I help you? <laughs> and it's, and it's going to happen to you that night at some oh, point, yeah, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. At some point, you're like, damn it. Well, they got happy, me. happy, happy birthday, Mr. Robert Irvine, 54 years old. And I, I thought he was a lot older. I'll tell you the truth, because this last couple of seasons, his hair has been grainy. He's been getting a lot more sensitive. He doesn't yell at people right away. He just goes in, sits down. He's like, well, we're going to help you out. Give me a hug. Hey, yeah. look at me. Look at me. I'm not leaving here until this is making money for you, as long as that's in two days. Because yeah. yeah. I'm out of here. But um, also, I, you know, I, 
I don't have uh, cable per se anymore. I got the Roku. I can get some live TV. But yeah. when I had cable and had this schedule of being up all night, I would be one of those guys when an infomercial came on. The first three times I saw it in that hour, I was like, who would buy this? And by the fourth one, I was like writing down the phone number going, I couldn't I couldn't eat a flat hose that expands when you put in the proper <laughs> amount, you know? So I thought I got away from these by not having uh cable anymore but now they're popping up like on tiktok and instagram and facebook ads and i gotta tell you there's something on the market right now that i really want and it's kind of disgusting but i think i'm gonna get it anyways have you guys seen the the ear cleaning probe with the camera yet yes oh my god that that is i'm just talking about this i love <laughs> to get in there like cleaning my ears is an obsession of mine man right hey, they have you, the perfect advertising for it because oh. they're like do you use q-tips what you've been doing all these years is packing that wax in i'm like oh my god i use q-tips every day Fucking this idiot. is probably why i can't <laughs> sing because yeah. my ears are clogged <laughs> mike i know that miguel knows this i don't know if you know mike but my favorite porn that i watch Mm. is disgusting bodily porn. I've told Miguel this before. I love watching earwax extraction videos. Exactly. I love watching Pimple sinus boppers. pimples. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I've said this before, but Mike, if you ever want to look up the most disgusting thing they have on YouTube, mm -hmm. look up something called Jiggers. J I G G E R S. It's yeah. the most disgusting thing and I love it. I'll tell you, <laughs> I absolutely uh, love it. I came back from, uh, I'd been on the road doing shows and Pedro Lima, Pedro Lima covered the obligatory podcast with Kermit Gonzalez. And I guess they spent the whole episode just talking about jiggers and I told him that. Things. I told So they Kermit. showed me the videos and that's, that's Kermit's new thing now. In the middle of a conversation about nothing related, he'll turn his screen around and show me a disgusting video while we're recording. Oh. I, I can't deal with it, man. I can't I deal with it. I don't know what inside me is broken where I love that. I so think my, they need to go ahead. Sorry, my I guess. just think they need to film these kind of like, you know, like it, like this is like porn for people. They love this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. watching these earwax videos, things like that. They need to film it like porn. Like mm -hmm. somebody needs to come oh. in, like, I heard you had a waxy buildup. And she's like, well, my husband's not home. And <laughs> a little camera in the ear. <laughs> a guy shows up in a delivery outfit, someone yeah. order ear. She's got, somebody she's got, one, she's got one in each ear. She's like, oh, yeah. no. DP! <laughs> As, as much as much as I want one, because just watching it gives me such a sense of relief. Just even yes. watching it, I yes. also kind of feel like I'm the guy who's going to go like a centimeter too far and do permanent damage to like my oh. eardrum. Yeah, you oh, know, my. I'm just that's that's all that's all in the wrist, sir. That's why I'm so good. That's how, it's so <laughs> satisfying. I might go a little too far. Ooh, right. <laughs> Have you seen also like I believe in that stuff, but then they got the stuff. Do they call Lit it your candling? Light it ear on fire. Been talking about that all week too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? But I read some review that that paper that you wax that you wrap up is actually wax coated. So when you stick it in your ear and you burn it, and everybody's showing you all the stuff at the bottom, that's just the wax from the paper that has dripped down. Damn it, I man. think it's a scam. I feel like I, it's a I scam. I was just having this conversation, and I was telling the girl, I was like, I think it's a scam. And she was like, "Why?" And I couldn't remember what I had read that said it was a scam. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have you call her. Next, you're gonna tell me. It? Next, you're gonna tell me that really isn't his stepsister, Mike. I don't want to hear it. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it really was okay. Well, guys, uh, we gotta go break real quick. Don't go anywhere though, because when we come back, I want to hear which as seen on TV device had you actually buy it, or which one were you on the fence about buying and didn't get for whatever reason. Uh, we'll be right back right here on Real Laps 104.3. Hey, folks, welcome back. You're still listening to Real Laps. I'm Mike Riley, joined in studio with James John and Miguel Colon Jr. We were just talking about uh, weird things that you've seen on TV. And I, I got to tell you guys, uh, I for a while, those stores popped up in the malls and flea markets everywhere. They as seen on TV. And like you can still go to Bed Bath & Beyond and they will have their as seen on TV selection. I don't know why it is. I know it's all crap. I know it's going to break. I know it's uh -huh. never going to work the way it works on TV. Yeah, I just have to have some of that stuff. I'll tell you the one that got me, and then I want to hear from you guys if any of you ever got sucked into this. It was 2000, 2001. I was living with my girlfriend, and I saw an advertisement 
for the perfect pancake maker. And yes. what, if you guys don't know what this is or don't remember it, it's basically two frying pans on a hinge. And you would pour your pancake batter. And then you didn't need a spatula to flip it. Because what you would do is just, in theory, turn the whole thing over. Just flip it over. Kind of like the waffle maker at the uh, at every hotel we stay at for when you're yep. making lobby waffles. Except here's the thing that lobby waffle makers have. They, per they form a perfect seal, and then they're on a bearing that rotates. And even then, you might still get some batter out the side. The perfect pancake had about a half an inch gap between these <laughs> frying pans. And more times than not, that pancake went shooting out the side half cooked. But yes. I still loved it. I still loved it. And I refused that it wasn't going to work for me. So we, we lost, a, we lost a lot of good pancakes during those years, but uh, how about <laughs> we all did? How about you, Miguel? Did you ever have a, as seen on TV type thing that you're like, man, that's going to make my life so much better. I don't care if it is 39 99 or two for the same price. If I order uh, now, you, you got four with it. If you order it now, <laughs> um, but it changed my life for a while. Um, was, I got the same one. It was this little Dude. like box that had a double-sided tape on it. You stuck it to your remote, and then you stuck the other box next to your TV. And when you lost your remote, you hit the button, and it started beeping. It would go beep, beep, beep. So you know how sometimes you took the remote to another room, you walked mm -hmm. around. I used to be a remote like walk-around guy and then mm -hmm. set it down. It would find it in the couch for you. When it was in there, you would just hit the button, and it would just start going beep. <laughs> and I mean, here's the deal. Did I ever lose the remote longer than like 10 minutes? No. Did I always find it? Yeah. But now, seconds later, and all it cost me was $12.99. And then what I didn't know is I was signed up for all these magazines and crap, and I had to call in to cancel. But oh, like, I looked at my credit card statement, and I was like, another $12.99? And they were like, yeah, you know, when you ordered it, because I ordered it by phone. I didn't order it on in line. Like, yep. they, 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 they asked you if they wanted to keep them on for other deals. And I was like, I don't remember them. And I work telemarketing. I know they lied. Mm -hmm. I used to lie. But yeah, so like about a month or two later, I got another twelve ninety nine charge for like these fishing magazines. And I was like, damn it. I was like, I don't want these. And I called up and I told them, I was like, I don't want the fishing magazines. And they were like, okay, no problem. And then they didn't take me off again. Like mm. I had to call, you had to call that third time. And they were like, I'm so sorry. Go ahead and keep the fishing magazines. And now I'm like, getting <laughs> into, I'm like getting into them. I'm like, send me the rest of the goddamn fishing magazines and then take me off this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so so just to be clear though the product worked out for you just like you wanted it to yeah until one of the batteries went dead in it, and then you couldn't find it yeah. you, know what I mean? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't care i when it comes to it was watch batteries that it took when it comes to yeah. those like little watch batteries if it dies i'm never buying another watch battery yep mm. yep you gotta go to that one kiosk in the mall and the guy's always like this is gonna be 55 dollars it's yeah. a very rare size <laughs> what about you james did you have it did you fall for any of the as seen on tv make your life easier easier type stuff oh man you know i did uh i'm gonna give you two one that i did buy and one that i'm on the fence of trying to buy right now because it just seems amazing now miguel i thought you were gonna say uh you were go you uh you had a george foreman grill Oh, because George, George Foreman, Foreman Grill was mm -hmm. one of those things. It wasn't a, a want. It was a necessity back in the day. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to have one. Bro. I was like, yo, if this dude can knock out Ali, then I believe him that we can cook some burgers <laughs> with no grease. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me say real quick. With the George Foreman Grill, I was living with one of my roommates. And I, you know me, I can I, when I worked in restaurants, I could go on the line and cook because the grill was set properly. The fryer was set properly. You put me in a regular house. I'm lost. If I need to prep stuff on my own and preheat things, he had a George Foreman grill and I was starving and I just went into the fridge and I, I found some chicken cutlets and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make myself some grilled chicken. So I opened it up. I threw it on, go back, check like 10 minutes later. It's not even, it's not even close to warm turn it all the way up, go back, check five minutes later. It's not, it's still, it's like, yeah, it's just raw chicken. He comes home. He's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I'm making chicken. He's like, how come you got the chicken in the bun warmer? And <laughs> I guess, I guess on these fancier forming grills, they had this clear they did. where you would put the buns and it would lightly heat. I didn't know the whole thing opened up like a press and that's where you put the chicken. So for like 20 minutes, I just had raw chicken setting, setting in his bun warmer. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out so well. But Mike, so. you just you just said one of the hacks you could do with the Foreman thing. You could double it as a panini press. 
Oh, at the same time. And a quesadilla maker. Mm -hmm. It's still right. quesadilla. It's still my quesadilla maker. That's what I That's use right. for my quesadillas. That's right. Man. I don't know how many grill it's it's amazing how just adding heat makes you feel not so poor. You know? Because it's like <laughs> we would we would have bread, a little mayonnaise, a little cheese, and a tomato on a sandwich. You're like, man, we need to do something with our life. But you throw that on some heat, you have some grill marks on it, and you're like, oh, we're ritzy. We're bougie. Oh. We're going to have some of that risotto tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> my other item that I want, and Mike, I think you turned me on to it. Mm -hmm. They had this commercial on because in my car right now, I have no AC and I drive every single mm -hmm. day. They have this portable AC unit that I keep seeing where all you do is add water and you'll have an AC con um, uh, unit and it will keep everything cool. You know what? We talked about on the show, you and my buddy, our buddy, Kevin Way, is in the same predicament as you. He doesn't yeah. have $1,500 to fix his AC, so he's just going to take it out. I know yeah. you guys are also happy that fall's coming because you can actually put the window down. I was going to surprise you both after we did that last trip, and I told you about those. They're like 80 bucks a piece. I was going to buy yeah. you each one, but then you were out from the show that week, and I brought it up on the show, and Miguel's like, man... Let me tell you about that. So, Miguel, oh, you, no. you want to give James the heads up? Miguel, don't break my heart. Let me tell you about that. Uh, He's saving you money right now. Oh. I had that thing in, in, a, in a condo that didn't have the right AC. It was warm. And that yeah. thing was right by my feet. Put up props so it would blow at me. And I was like, I'm going to be cold. Like, the bottom of my feet definitely got some air. The rest of it just dissipated everywhere, and you have to change the water all the time. It is really not, it is not the end all be all, man. Now, uh. let, let me tell you another option, James, that you have, and these actually work. And okay. if you go on YouTube, you'll appreciate uh, the technology they put into this stuff. Now, do you guys know we're getting. We're getting a little off topic, but that's what we do on this show. Did you guys know how and why the air conditioner was invented? How no. the air conditioner was? I believe it was, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt. It might have been, who, who was the other, uh, who was the other, who was the president in the wheelchair? Sorry. Uh, uh, Truman. Uh, uh, no, 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 no,
you're good to go. Don't even yeah. need a battery. Don't need to charge it up. Just pop that in there. And then, uh, you know, the nice thing at the new lowdown studio is we got a nice size refrigerator freezer. You bring that two liter bottle in, you throw it in the freezer, you take it out on the way out. Yeah. You take it all the way back to Kissimmee. Bing, bang, boom, Bob's your Bro, own. And I'm really, I'm really going to do this and take a picture or video so people know. Jay, oh, I did it. And when yeah. people say anything to you, you'd be like, sorry, I care about the environment. <laughs> what, you so do, what you do on the side of the uh, on the side of the uh cooler is you put one of those biohazard fresh organs just so if the cop <laughs> pulls you over you can both have a good laugh about it yeah, what's true. in the box what's, what's in the in box, the box? <laughs> <laughs> ah. my liver to stop working it's well, in there oh you know what i'm thinking real quick too this mm -hmm. is you know dream hand life hack here what if you put another one in the back seat. So you got one blowing from the passenger seat at you from the side. Oh. And then this back seat one blowing at like the back of your neck. And oh, then, you and then, you and talking you know, dirty now. You, you could just tell the kids, sorry, I got no room for you. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> stay cool. <laughs> but dad, it's my graduation. Sorry, kid. <laughs> if, if, if I ever got an Uber driver and he shows up with two coolers with the <laughs> homemade AC, I'm still going to get in that car because this guy gets stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. He's going to get me where I'm going, whether he has to strap me to his back and carry me. He's like, mm -hmm. technically, this is still you getting a ride. So I would like five stars. <laughs> I like this guy, it. This guy cuts through people's yards to get you there quicker. You know? I like it a lot. <laughs> so uh, just getting back to the uh, as seen on TV, anything else that you even slightly were interested in? Yeah, uh, I, I've never got it, but mm -hmm. I always wanted to get that. Like, did you guys see when they used to have that like laser fryer? Do you remember seeing this thing? It was supposed to use lasers to cook your food. I've never seen anyone have it. I've never seen it in a store. It didn't make it. But it's supposed to be like laser technology to cook your food. And the thing is, I always like the cooking stuff just because they're always cooking dishes. They pop it up. But it was one of those. It was like $189. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't get it. The rotisserie one I always wanted, too. There was like a laser rotisserie also. No. I don't no, think Miguel. Would, see, if you buy a rotisserie, that means you gave up on life. If you're cooking <laughs> an entire chicken at your house, that means you don't. You gave up. You're James, done. If I, if I got a rotisserie, I would get the same outlet Mike was talking about that plugs in your car. <laughs> and I just have, have a rotisserie chicken with potatoes on the bottom going all day long. Yo, I just keep a rotisserie chicken on deck at all times, son. Yeah. <laughs> you know what well, I know? well, guys, we got we to gotta take a break real quick. But when we come back, uh, you know, have you, ever, have you ever felt like you were born in the wrong decade? Like you would have fit in better somewhere else? We're going to talk about that when we come back right here on Real Laughs 104. Point. Black people say no. Hey, folks, welcome back. You're listening to Real Laughs. I'm Mike Hurley, joined in the studio with Jane John and Miguel Colon Jr. Now, uh, before we left, uh, I had mentioned that, you know, sometimes I just feel like I was born in the wrong generation or the wrong decade. And I got to tell you, up until recently, it used to be the 50s. Like, every time I see a 50s movie, I wanted, I want those cars. I want those diners. You know, I want to be a part of that, the dress and the lifestyle. Like when I was in high school, I used to, back in 1990, I was the kid wearing the Chuck Taylor All Stars jeans and black t shirts every day because I thought that's how cool kids still dressed, you know? And yeah. I used to think that was the right time for me. I was listening to Dion and the Belmonts and all 50 stations and stuff like that. My dream car is still a 57 Chevy sky blue convertible. But uh, some news recently hit the uh, paper that made me think maybe I was maybe that was even, you know, too late in the timeline for me. Because historians are now saying that in the early Greek times, small penises were considered desirable. Let's so, get the time oh. machine going, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> if ever I feel like there's a time calling to me, it came up because they started doing the study of how come all these statues and paintings, everybody, they're building all these guys with great physiques, but then smaller penises. And it turns out that everything was about balance to the Greeks. So to have a larger... To have a larger phallus was actually not part of the balance. So people actually found that the smaller penises to be more attractive of the perfect standard. And they actually, the way they ridiculed people was by insulting them, by telling them they had larger phalluses. Or in paintings, if you see paintings from back then and someone like, if you see a painting of the devil back then, the devil would have a larger phallus because they were like, look at this evil guy, so unproportionate. And I'm just thinking, man, can we bring back some of that? Can we just, <laughs> just a little bit? No pun what? intended. 
you know? Mike, you just giving me another reason why black people don't time travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, like, when the Moors started invading? They're like, mm -hmm. what is everybody looking at? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but like everything, oh. I'm actually wondering if there's any truth to this or if it's just one um, less than endowed historian who's like, no. I'm going to make, uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. If Trump can make his history, I'm going to make my history. My own. Here's turns, the thing. Turns out, ladies, also crying and urinating yourself during sex because your dad slapped you around. Very sexy and antique. <laughs> okay? Very manly. Very, Very manly. manly. Uh, Very manly. Yeah. So, oh, my uh, God. Yeah. So, of course, you know, uh, it's it's common to go to a museum and see a naked statue or someone naked in a painting. Unfortunately, there's stuff going on in our own state right now where people are exposing themselves and it's not appropriate. And that's actually happening in virtual school. Yeah, uh, wow. there was a school board meeting in Boca Raton, Jesus. Florida this week where one teacher actually had to get up and express to the parents of her students, please do not appear with big joints in your hands and lit cigarettes, uh, the joints be as big as a cigar. Please do not have that in your hand and mouth. And for God's sake, put on some drawers. So apparently there's an issue with homeschooling going on right now that just because the kids have made their home, their school environment. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the kids have made the school, their home environment. Parents aren't getting on board. Like somewhere there's a dad going, no, 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 no. I read the handbook. The dress code says students. It doesn't yeah. say anything about me. This is my house, and in my house, we don't put on pants till we're walking out the door. I can, right. imagine, I can imagine a dad just looking at the monitor with, with a joint hanging from his mouth and a bottle <laughs> a bottle of Jim Bean. He's like, well, let me explain something. As the superintendent of Andre's house, Andre going to do whatever the hell Andre wants. Uh, if I could speak in my own defense, Your Honor, you're yeah. not in court, sir. Your yeah. Honor, your honor. Uh, I just want to say I was going to put on clothes, but then I got high. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't, get, don't get offended if I start banging the lunch lady. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> little kid just one single tear crying like yeah Help me. <laughs> yeah you know how many kids are like you understand why i was trying to explain to you it's hard for me to to, to get to school you mm -hmm. just met my dad's naked ass walking across mm -hmm. smoking a joint and now you now you don't understand why it was hard for me to make mondays well that's exactly. that's that's what the teachers are saying they're like we have literally seen it all we've seen it all at this point mom's walking around with bras on or towels or stuff like that i'm not gonna lie like, I've had minutes when my kids call me for help, and I realize that I might have a T-shirt and, like, my boxers on, but they can yeah. pass as shorts sometimes. But I still try to stay off camera and everything yeah. else. They said they're worried about the fact not only is it having on the children who live in that house, who this is, like, their normal life, I guess, to them, but the other children who are seeing into the other children's house, seeing that going on. I'm like, well, I don't know how other pa parents are handling it, but me, I'm just pointing to their mom going, oh, and you thought I was bad? Look at that. Yeah. Look at Look that. It. Look at that. Look. I'm a winner. I can oh imagine bully, bullies just sitting there with a notepad like, this is great <laughs> stuff. Uh, yes. right. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Andre, I saw your dad. Uh, he's got a very Greek penis. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, uh, I, I know, Miguel, you, of course, you don't have any kids or anything living in the house. James, uh, your kids are all grown up. Nobody's doing homeschooling from your house, are they? They are, yeah. both my kids, but they know better than to do it around me. They do it in the rooms. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I will, I will do things on purpose to embarrass them because my kids are still at that age where they're like, Dad, don't speak when my kid, when my friends get here, don't say a word. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well it's, it's funny because that actually made the uh, talking point too. The woman actually said, and parents, if you could stop trying to make funny faces to make your kids crack up, it's not cool. So oh, man. <laughs> it's very cool, man. It's my job as a parent to embarrass them, man. <laughs> like. I came home today. I ran out and grabbed some lunch at Wendy's, and my kids love French fries when I get them. So they were both in class. It wasn't their lunch break, but I walked yeah. by the little area. We have a room set up with their desks and everything, made it like a classroom. And I walked by and they saw fries, and you're not allowed to eat on camera. Like, so I had fries though, and I, I, being one of those parents that they're discussing, go over and hand my kids fries. These two, without even flinching, do this move right here. They lean out of camera grab the fry and come back so suspicious just hands up like a like a little asian girl laughing at some cartoons <laughs> i'm a little 
I'm a little confused, Mike. Why can't I eat on camera? Um, apparently, you're not allowed to eat on camera. And I think part of it is the fact of what we were just saying about not wanting other kids to feel missed out or see other things. Like, because you your parents, don't, your parents lot, don't love you? They don't get you well, french fries? Well, I, I wouldn't say that, but I mean, a lot of people don't really talk about that much anymore. But remember when this all went down, one of the biggest issues is there were a lot of these kids who going to school, what's the difference between Their getting meal. breakfast and lunch yeah. and not getting breakfast and lunch? Yeah. You know, so I think that factors in big time. But I also think it's part of the trying to keep some sort of school setting going on. Yeah. Like gotcha. they're not allowed to eat, not allowed to drink, keep distractions away. And so whatnot, risotto's you know? out. No, can't have the risotto. <laughs> no, no, no wet rice. No wet rice. I can't eat can't this parkwa. Really? I can't imagine. How, I never really thought about it. I just always assumed rice was kind of wet. Like I've never gone through the process of like, yeah, dry rice, wet. Well, rice, rice is dry, rice that's is steamed, moist. right? Rice, yeah, is, yeah. Yes. You know, steam it, boil it. You boil it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but rice, it, like, should be like, fluffy, not not fluffy. stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you, mm -hmm. yeah, risotto is like just wet. It's not like it's wet. not like Thai rice though. Like Thai rice is nice and sticky, but yeah, that's a sticky rice. I do a whole show on rice, guys. I mean, oh, I'm <laughs> with you, Miguel. I am with yeah, you. Let's yeah. do it, bro. So mm -hmm. we've we've done some uh, we've done some talking about cooking on the show before, and uh, I know I know you guys like especially James. You do a lot of the cooking around the house. You do a lot of the cleaning. Miguel, you live on your own, so you do like everything. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to kind of ask you guys as you get older. Like our buddy Kermit just got a house, and he used to knock me for years for like mowing the lawn and getting excited about a weed whacker and everything. But now that he has a house and a yard, this guy went full tilt, full out. Ken Miller, same thing. Got a house, went involved the lawn stuff. And I've been telling both of them for years, there's nothing more zen, even if you're not good at it. There's nothing more zen than just doing some yard work and detaching. Like, I'll have my headphones on, listen to like 90s alt rock or something. I'll be out there just mowing my lawn. But it's one of the best times of my week because even though I'm out there, it's hot, I'm sweaty, and everything else, nobody's bothering me. It gives me a chance to just be out there. So I wanted to ask you guys, is there what's what's your least favorite chore to do? And what's the chore that you just it's not even a chore for you? Because it's just it makes you so happy to do it. I'll tell you this. My least favorite is yard work. Really? I'm like, man, I don't uh, want to do the yard, man. Uh -uh. I just I don't you know, if, if it was days like today where it's always nice outside, mm -hmm. maybe because it's like, but when it's hot summer. I don't mm -hmm. want to do yard work, but I tell you what, man, mopping the floor because I got hardwood floors. Yeah, that's my joint. Just because it is like instantaneous as you move away from the spot you did, and then like I'm gonna tell you, when my mom, anytime my mom has ever mopped my floors, it, it it looks like it looks in commercials where it has that shine to it. So I'm always trying to nail that perfect mm -hmm. mop, like old English mixed with fabuloso and just like a. Touch of heroin. You get that fabuloso oh. smell. That mm. fabuloso smell. I don't care what restaurant you worked in. Everybody had that little purple spray bottle. Yep. And I'll tell you, as a customer, if you're smelling fabuloso, that means it's 11 o'clock. The restaurant's closed. Finish your food and get out. Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, we have degreaser and yeah. a different bottle we use for cleaning when we had customers in. Fabuloso was this section is shut down. Yeah. You walked in at 1045 when the sign said we closed at 11. You need to wolf down that burger and get the hell out. I used know? to tell mm -hmm. people if I walk in a girl's house and I don't smell Fabuloso, I can't even be sure mm -hmm. if it's clean. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> like, That's right. Fabuloso is the key to cleaning. You see everybody yeah. got those Roombas. They had yeah. the ones that swept like the little floor robots and then they got the little ones that did like a light, you yeah. know, I guess mopping. I think still the most disturbing thing I've ever seen on Facebook is a picture where Roomba hasn't been able to differentiate a pile dif differentiate, differentiate. A, yeah. a pile of, of dust from dog poop. Have you ever yep. seen the one where I saw the Roomba grabs it and they come home and yeah. you can see the track of the Roomba? It's like that that turtle over game the we used to do in computers where you could draw a path and make a design. I co I commented, just move. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about you, James? Uh, you got a chore you love doing and a chore you hate doing? I hate two things. I hate doing gutters and I hate painting a house inside. Oh, that yeah. will bust your knees and your back as an old person. That's my least favorite. But for me, you already said it. Cooking is my zen. I will yeah. put my I will put my wireless headphones on. I will put on a good podcast, and I will just cook for about an hour, hour and a half, and be perfectly okay in my own little zen-like 
garden, my happy place. So yeah, cooking it, for me. If comedy, TV, and radio doesn't work out for you, I could totally see you being one of those personal chefs that goes over people's oh, houses, man. prepares meals, collects your thousand dollars, and dips out. Yeah, I'm out. I, I oh, see him as dope. like a, as an old black mammy. You know, now I listen to him. Miguel will go with you. He'll make the risotto and he'll mop the floor when you guys are done. I'm going to need all you cheerings to come in here to wash your hands and get ready to eat these food, these vittles. And you know what? I'll 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 fine tune I'll fine tune my perfect pancake skills, and we'll be doing brunches in no time. Omelet bar and brunches. There you go. Well, Baby, guys, no we matter got- what you do, don't you let them get your cornbread. Don't you let them get your cornbread. We 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 got to get out of here in just a minute. Now I know both of you guys are working this weekend. So Miguel, what's up? Where you at? Actually, my shows got canceled because what? Of, yeah, because of this COVID over. Uh, it's, I'm going to get a reschedule. This is comedy right now, man. I yeah. thought of yeah, anything. Things had opened. Well, the, I know in Orange I, County, things had opened back up to 50%. I thought that was going to be better for us. And they, I thought it was going to be good, but I got that reschedule text. Ah, oh, man. man. So, so at least I got it at the beginning of the week, guys. Uh, yep. you know, I was telling everybody, uh, so don't go come out tonight. Uh, <laughs> 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 hopefully soon again. Well, oh, too bad. What about you, James? Where you at? I will be at Margaritaville on Friday and Saturday. Friday shows at 8.30. Uh, Saturday shows at 8. If you want free tickets, hit me up on Facebook, or you can dial 407-622-5653 and get some free tickets that way. To nice, show solidarity nice. to me, don't go to James's show either. Cool. <laughs> cool got it. I get paid the same no matter who's there. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for listening to Real Laughs. As always, be sure to check us out on the iHeart app. We usually post our shows the day after we record, so take a listen there. You can listen to this show and all our past shows. Also, check out our sister shows. You got Monsters in the Morning, The Jim Colbert Show, News Junkie, and of course, we're always lit in by the amazing Tom and Dan. Thanks for listening. Join us again next week right here on Real Laughs, Real Radio 104.1.